A drug bust in the crystal meth capital of Alaska. Six felony counts, some for manufacturing a substance. In our number one story in the countdown, the new thriller in Wasilla and the target, the future mother-in-law of Governor Sarah Palin's pregnant daughter, which could mean really just by definition, Governor Sarah Palin is palling around with drug dealers. 42-year-old Sherry Johnson was arrested yesterday at her home in Wasilla, the town that state troopers declared last September was the meth capital of Alaska. It happened after police served a warrant on her home at the, quote, conclusion of an undercover narcotics investigation. Johnston was charged with six felony drug counts, specifically second-degree misconduct involving a controlled substance that is generally manufactured or delivered, and fourth-degree misconduct involving controlled substances or possession. State troopers not releasing information about the kind or amount of drugs. Mrs. Johnson is, of course, the mother of Levi Johnson, the 18-year-old who drew notoriety in September just before the Republican National Convention, of course, when Governor Palin announced that her teenage daughter, Bristol, was pregnant and Levi was the father. Governor Palin showing that natural empathy and connection to the average American that has rocketed her to the top of the greasy political pole. Her spokesman today responding to the sad news by saying, quote, this is not a state government matter, therefore the governor's communication staff will not be providing comment or scheduling interview opportunities. Mrs. Johnston was booked at the Matsu pretrial facility yesterday and released at about 2 p.m. on a $5,000 bond. Crystal Palin is due to give birth tomorrow, according to her grandfather, and the previously announced impending marriage between Bristol Palin and Levi Johnston is still apparently impending. Let's turn now to our old friend, comedian Christian Finnegan. Christian, good evening. Oh, so lovely to be here. I'm thinking that with that last statement, this is not a government matter, therefore the governor's communication staff will not be providing comment or scheduling interview opportunities. With that, the governor's refusal to say, you know, a human thing about this, like this is sad news or I hope mm -hmm. this works out, that her silence on this also serves as a big giant go-to-it sign for commentators and comedians. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I guess somebody's got to fill the vacuum. <laughs> the, the, the sad truth is, is that nothing you say or I say would be nearly as entertaining as seeing Sarah Palin discuss this head-on. I mean, can you imagine that press conference? You know, oh, I, you know, I'm just feeling so sad about the, the methamphetamines and also, too, as well, the addicts with the facial sores and the neck tattoos and the uh, uh, paying for random sex acts at the bus depot for drug cash. It's just so not awesome. I mean, to think we're going to be deprived of that press conference is just devastating to me. Well, think of it this way. Maybe you'll get to hear all that at the trial. Mm. Uh, let's play this out a little further. These are the future in-laws uh, of, of Governor Palin's daughter. So if we can assume then social interaction between the governor and Mrs. Johnston at some point, then particularly if you put the governor's standards uh, to this for what constitutes this. Is it a stretch to say that the governor's been palling around with a drug dealer? Well, I mean, this is the problem when you start playing guilt by association. Eventually, one of your associations is going to make you look like an ass. And, uh, <laughs> Keith, I, I strongly urge you not to go down the same path because right at this very moment, it could be said that you are palling around with someone who is responsible for over $40,000 theft of office supplies. And there is also a public indecency thing. But my point is nobody's hands are clean here, Keith. There's not $40,000 worth of office supplies left in that, that uh, office behind you, so I don't know what you're... What you're oh, you don't mean necessarily... No, okay, not I got, here. I got oh, many years of temp work. Will this, uh, do you think, become the governor's most sort of persistent backdrop, uh, at least symbolically speaking, because there's no photo op like this, but since the, the, the turkey slaughter videotape? Well, you know, you, you keep thinking it's the last one. I mean, this woman is a genius. I mean, the, the way they just keep littering it out there, it's a little piece, a little piece, like just when you think that, just when the turkey thing is starting to get old, a new hit single drops, I'm <laughs> telling you, this meth lab is the I want to hold your hand to the turkey slaughters love me do. I mean, which makes you know that she's got a Sergeant Pepper someday, and I just, I, I got my fingers crossed waiting for it. And uh, Mrs. Johnston's, uh, Governor Palin's uh, brand new grandchild, it, due tomorrow, the timing of this mm -hmm. is just extraordinary. You want to take a venture here in light of uh, recent developments about uh, baby names? Well, I mean, you know, if it's a girl, uh, Crystal's a nice name. Um, <laughs> and a boy, uh, you know, Matthew. Matthew, maybe? I, I will say this for the record. I wish that kid the best. And I guarantee you, knowing what we know now, Levi Johnson is going to be a great father because he's obviously used to being around people with no teeth. Uh, do you think the ultimate the $64,000 question, is this going to reduce Governor Palin's uh, likelihood that she'd run for president in 2012 and please say no? Not if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> I, I am looking, the Palin 2012 presidential campaign, 
I feel like that about like the way a comic book geek feels about a new Lord of the Rings movie. I, I, I'm willing, even if the Republicans don't nominate her, I say we just get a party started. We'll start collecting signatures. I know a couple people over at HuffPo. We'll get this thing going. What do you think, Pete? <laughs> I'm, I'm in. Put me down for line number one. I'll write my name in right now. Oh, dare to dream. The comedian Christian Finnegan, many thanks, and please empty your pockets before you leave. Happy holidays. That's countdown for this, the 2050th day since the declaration of mission accomplished in Iraq. Up next, Rachel with the latest bizarre Rick Warren interview and whether he might self-destruct before the inaugural. I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.